Hi, I'm Robert Davi. Don't change the dial. Profiles is coming right up. Welcome to Profiles, I'm Desi Sanchez. Today's guest is Robert Davi, an actor's actor who's appeared in over 70 films ranging from Die Hard and The Goonies to Showgirls and License to Kill. He's worked opposite Sinatra, Brando, Schwarzenegger, and Eastwood, along with many of Hollywood's top directors such as Steven Spielberg. Today, Davi is instantly recognized throughout the world. After a short break, we'll join our host Mickey Burns as he welcomes actor Robert Davi to Profiles. Welcome back to Profiles, I'm Desi Sanchez. Besides establishing himself as one of Hollywood's most in-demand bad guys, Robert Davi is also a classically trained vocalist. In fact, he grew up studying opera. Robert is currently celebrating the release of his debut album, titled Davi Sings Sinatra. The album is a tribute to a man he's always admired and to the great American songbook. So, let's join our host, Mickey Burns, on location from the Hotel Wales in the heart of New York City as he welcomes the talented Robert Davi to profile. When you around the need in me, my heart says yes indeed to me. Proceed to tell you that you're marvelous. Tell you that you're wonderful. Fly with me, let's fly. and fly away. Robert Davi, welcome to our show Profiles. Thanks for having me. It's an honor meeting you today. And, and you. Appreciate it. Uh, of course, you are an actor who have, has starred in over 70 movies. Uh, that include Die Hard, We Loved You as Agent Johnson in that, uh, The Goonies, which has turned into a cult classic, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, License to Kill, the James Bond film and many, many more. Mm -hmm. However, I was a little surprised to learn uh, that singing, not acting, is your first love. Absolutely, yeah. When I was a kid, I mean, it was, there were concurrent uh, loves or passions, you mm -hmm. know, the acting and the singing. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point, in, uh, around eighth grade, they discovered the voice, I guess when it, it changes for a, for a young boy. Mm -hmm. Also from an Italian family, but you know, early on you're listening to Caruso, Caruso. And, <laughs> and Sinatra. You and know. Pavarotti later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert, some of your fans will, I'm sure, be surprised to learn that you're a classically trained vocalist. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, studied opera for many years. Mm -hmm. That's correct, yeah. I mean, wow. in uh, high school, I went to Seton Hall High School, and uh, one of the nuns while I was in the shower, <laughs> playing after football practice, heard my voice from the, uh, the shower and sent one of the guys in and said, you know, said to him, who's singing? I want to know who's singing. So all of you. a sudden, that was me. Oof. He told me, he said, Sister Francis Mary wants to talk to you. That was her name. And I went yeah. out with a towel and I said, can I help you? And she said, we want you to go to Glee Club. You have a, uh, is that your boy? Yeah. Anyway, I didn't want to go to the Glee Club. and uh, Wasn't cool? Yeah. <laughs> at that time, there was, there was no show called Glee. There was something, you know, just not very, you know, cool. I was playing football at the time. Oh, I was yeah. doing the acting. Yeah. And I did love the singing. So she called my mom, and then my mom convinced me to try it. And then all these yeah. nice Catholic Irish girls were in the Glee Club. And that kind of, like, got me into Spade. it. Well, and then they said, we want to get you an opera sing uh, a, a, a coach. And they got me my first coach, a guy on Long Island, uh, a guy named Michael Signorelli. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then... Uh, I wrote to Tito Gobi, who was one of the greatest singing baritones of yeah, all time. Yeah. And then a guy named Dan Farrow at Juilliard and Samuel Margolis, wow. who taught with Robert, uh, taught Robert Merrill. And, and, you, and you said about that, about your opera training, uh, you said, I was a baritone with the heart of a tenor. Yes. And consequently, that did hurt you a bit because you damaged the voice somewhat yeah, along they, the way? Yeah. Yeah. What happened was, you know, again, uh, you know, I, I was typecast as the, as the bad guy in film and stuff. Right. And, you know. Yep. But in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the singing, you, the baritone in the opera especially also is the yeah. bad guy a lot. Yeah. You know, they, get, they don't get the romantic arias for the most part, right. but the tenors did. Sure. And I, I then, I did have a, a, a large range, and there's a thing called the tessitura, and that's where your voice sits naturally. Right. And uh, I was yeah. singing out of that comfortable range 
in those tenor, uh, tenor arias, and that kind of caused a, a strain like you would do with any muscle. You did mention briefly, you, you grew, grew up here in New York, Astoria, Queens. Uh, your I mom was, was born in Astoria. Yeah. And then at five, we moved to Long Island, okay. Dix Hills. Yeah. And your mom was an Italian-American. Yeah. And uh, your father was a, a native of Sicily. Yeah. yeah, it was he. How would you describe your, your childhood growing up in this area? Well, I mean, magical. I mean, what, really? Oh, sure. Back then, I mean, come on. I mean, you're in New York and you're an Italian American. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it was just, uh, uh, and life was different back then. There was more of a reverence for life mm. and for people. And uh, the arts and school, you know, the, it was just a, uh, it was a good time. It was a very good time, yeah. But I also read as a child you spoke Italian. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if that multilingual foundation helped you at all uh, as an actor later on absorbing accents. That and the musicality. Both Absolutely, of them. yeah. Well, yeah. you know, Italian is the purest language. Sure. The vowel sounds are the purest language. And it's very musical, you know, the Italian language. Yeah. So yeah. that being, one, you know, because my grandparents, both sides were one from. Nusco di Provenza di Avalino Città di Nusco, which yeah. is in the mountainside of Naples, and the other was right. Vecino Palermo, which is Torretta and Messina. Mm -hmm. So you heard, I heard that, that, you know, those sounds were my first early sounds. And that kind of gives you a different kind of ear, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then also the music that was continually played. Sure. Uh, now you're currently celebrating, as, as I briefly mentioned, and performing your debut album, and it's called Davi Singh Sinatra. And the album is a tribute to a man that you obviously admire, uh, and to the great American songbook, uh, which you've called the Shakespeare of America. Yeah, yeah. I think that this, uh, you know, it wasn't just about me. It's like I didn't wake up one morning and say, hey, you know what, I'm going to go sing and do an album. I mean, <laughs> it's been brewing in, in, in me for a while. And the, this songbook, and especially mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the great American songbook, is the Shakespeare of America. I call it the golden yeah. age of American music, and, and other people do. I like it. You know, and yeah. it's, it's, it's at a time when, no matter how difficult things were in the country, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, my parents growing up and their parents, and the, the, it was a cohesiveness and a unity that this music brought to sure. us. Sure, you had the Depression. Yeah. Oh, yeah, during, World War II, yeah, the Depression. Right. Tough times, and you had great songwriters like Irving Berlin and, and the Gershwins, Harold Arland and Yip Harburg. Yep. Sammy Kahn, Jimmy Van Eusen, on and on and on. And, and back then, this music certainly pulled the country together. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons, yeah. one of the motivating reasons for me for, for this is because today, you know, this is, the, this is a, a music that the world fell in love with the country for. Sure. And uh, you have, you know, interesting and good music all over, from Lady Gaga to, you know, whatever rap artist is out there currently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's doesn't span that 10 to 80. It doesn't span cultural divides. Right. You know what I mean? It, it separates this here no matter what. When I do concerts, they're finding an inordinate amount of young people coming to it, and middle-aged and older. There was, I did a concert in, in L.A. last week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A 20-year-old Korean girl came and bought five albums. Right. I mean, how do you explain that? Uh, guys from Ro Mo Moscow or France and so around the world, it continually has that kind of uh, and, appeal. And the other thing, you know, Sinatra to me was the greatest interpreter of, of, of the songbook. He also studied opera as a young boy. Did he? Oh, yeah. He was studied with a guy from the Metropolitan Opera. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what he did was he brought the bel canto technique to singing, mm. which was the first to popular music, which hadn't been done before. You had the crooners like Bing Crosby yeah. and the rest of them, but they didn't have the depth of tone that Sinatra had also, he was the first superstar to use his celebrity to fight against anti-Semitism and any kind of racial bigotry. Mm -hmm. uh, he also wouldn't go to s and play in certain places if black musicians weren't allowed in. Wow. Yeah, so he was way ahead of that. And yeah, good. I mention that because he imbued the lyric with an epic sensibility. Yeah. He wasn't just a guy crooning or singing a song. Mm -hmm. uh, again, for me growing up, there were two great voices, Caruso and Sinatra. Well, it's certainly uh, obvious, it's certainly obvious that your love for singing is uh, plentiful. More, more than plentiful. <laughs> yeah. That's an understatement. It's an understatement. He's what? being kind, I want you to know. That was plentiful. <laughs> Why did you wait so long uh, to, to, to uh, kickstart your recording career? The need to express through music right now is so overwhelming. Okay. And like I say, the need in terms of me reaching out to society 
in a way to try to bring this music to a wide range of people yeah. with optimism. It's not about turning, you know, the album is called Dobby Sings Sinatra on the Road to Romance. Right. And while it reflects different aspects of romance uh, between two people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, the falling in love, the, the depth of love, the falling out of love, right. the despair, and then the rebuilding and the rediscovery. Mm. It, it's the same thing with our country. You it's know, I believe that this is the greatest sure. country of all time. Yeah. And we, it's on the road to romance, back to feeling that way about, about our country. So it has a dual purpose for me. Sure.